Okay, so um, today's training will be about uh, Galaxy Australia and its use as a tool for variant detection within genomes. My name is Jeff Christensen and I'm from the Embel Australia Bioinformatics Resource. Um, we're also uh, obviously, uh, sometimes short to Embel ABR for short, and I'll be your host for today. Um, and my colleague, Christina Hall, um, who's based in Melbourne, um, also from Embel ABR, is behind the scenes co-hosting this webinar or this um, uh, event with me. So Embel ABR, in case you haven't heard of us, is a distributed national research infrastructure. We provide bioinformatics support to life science researchers in Australia. It was set up to maximise Australia's bioinformatics capability, and we currently have 13 nodes across the country, um, which are shown on this slide here. And all of, all of our nodes undertake or support bioinformatics activities around several key areas, and these are data, compute, tools, platforms, standards, and training. Um, so a major priority across um, all of the Embel ABR and one of the key areas is bioinformatics training. And this is why Galaxy Australia has partnered with us, Embel ABR, and all of our nodes you're associated with to deliver this training today. Um, so in this short introductory training session, we'll be exploring Galaxy Australia, as I said, which is an open access, free to use portal for all Australian life science researchers uh, for performing data manipulation and analysis. And today we'll be looking at um, how it can be used as a tool for variant detecting um, using bacterial genomes as the examples for today. So we have 78 attendees registered across 11 sites. And today we're pretty excited to also have, um, to welcome Monash Malaysia on board for this training event. So um, Salamat Datang to everyone there in KL and welcome to um, everyone else joining us from across Australia. So um, the lead trainer today is Dr. Igor McKoonan. So his role is user support lead and a trainer for the Galaxy Australia service. And he's based at the Research Computing Centre at the University of Queensland. Igor has extensive practical experience and analysis of next generation sequencing data, comparative genomics, genetics and molecular biology, and prior to his role at Galaxy Australia, he conducted research using these approaches at a number of places, including the University of Queensland and QIMR, the Queensland Institute of Medical Research in Brisbane, the Institute of Cytology and Genetics in Novosibirsk in Russia, uh, University of Geneva in Switzerland, and the University of Cambridge in the UK. Um, today, Igor is being assisted by Mike Tang, um, so he'll be off screen but helping. Uh, we also have a number, a large number of facilitators who are helping to make this um, training um, event possible. So we have 15 facilitators across our participating sites who have all volunteered their time, uh, both in attending a two-day training event uh, a couple of months ago and in, obviously in organising the event at your node and as well, of course, being there to facilitate the training today. So without their help, this event wouldn't be possible. So we'd really like to acknowledge them for donating their time and all of their efforts in organising and facilitating this event. Um, so we have quite a lot of sites, but I'll just um, name everyone that's um, helping out. So at JCU, we have two sites. Um, Ashley Wardenberg is in Cairns and Ira Cook is in Townsville. At USQ in Toowoomba, we have Nilafar Vahigi. Um, in Hobart at the University of Tasmania, Mike Charleston. At, in Sydney, at the University of Sydney in the Sydney Informatics Hub, we have Rosemary Sats and Tracy Chu. At the University of Queensland um, in St Lucia in Brisbane, Gareth Price. Um, in Adelaide, we have Juan Carlos Sanchez, who is also being helped by Elena Kalashian and Nathan Watson Hay. Um, in Melbourne at Monash, there's, we have two sites. So at Clayton, we have uh, Sonica Tiagi and Yang Hu. At Monash, Hudson Sen Wang. Um, also in Melbourne, uh, we have a, a group at the University of Melbourne, uh, Melbourne Bioinformatics, where we have Anna Syme, Simon Gladman and Veronica Liu, who is from Metabolomics Australia, helping out. And finally, in Kuala Lumpur at Monash, Malaysia, we have Zaral Hanifa. So before I hand over to Igor, I'll just mention uh, um, some logistics and how to get involved in this training session. So Igor will be delivering the content over video conferencing today. And at all participating sites, they'll generally be muted throughout the workshop, and that's just to stop background noise, uh, especially when Igor's speaking. But at certain times during the session, um, and these are marked in the schedule, which I'll talk about in a minute, 
um, facilitators at any of our sites can um, request to speak to Igor directly so they can be unmuted. Um, you also should have been given some post-it notes from your facilitator. Um, if you haven't, uh, don't worry. Um, it just is a, it's a nice way to sort of smooth things, um, uh, uh, just get things um, functioning smoothly in the room. If you do have them, you should be given one pink uh, post-it note and one green. Um, so if you're having any issues, please just pop the pink uh, post-it note somewhere visible to the facilitator in your room. And that's just a flag that they can, that you need help and they can come and um, help you out. Uh, the green is generally that everything's okay or I've completed a, a, an exercise. Um, also today, we have a shared, what we're calling a discussion board that everyone can edit. So. Um, every, all of the participants um, can write into this document. So you can use it to raise questions um, and you can also use it to answer questions, make comments um, as we go. Um, Igor is going to be looking at the discussion board periodically and he'll also be answering questions. Um, I'd also like to, uh, I'll just before I move on, draw your attention to the link at the, at the top of the um, discussion board. So, uh, at Ember ABR, we have a code of conduct and that outlines the behaviour that's expected at this or any Ember ABR event. So that's both in the physical location you're sitting as well as online and that, that includes the discussion board. Um, in a nutshell, the code of conduct um, uh, requires that all participants in our events are expected to make the event welcoming to everybody present and to show respect and courtesy to all others present as well. So please have a look at that document um, when you, when you um, open up the discussion board, just to make sure you're familiar with the content. Um, and finally, if you want to revisit any part of today's training, um, we're recording this and um, selected parts of that recording will be made available on the Embel ABR YouTube channel, the, uh, the, the URL here. Um, we'll let you know of all these links um, when the training session is finished. So we'll send out an email in, a, in probably about a week or something like that. Okay, so now I will hand over to Igor, who will take it away. Can you see it now? Good. All right. Uh, this is Introduction to Galaxy Australia Workshop, uh, Finding Genetic Variants in Bacterial Sequence Data. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, we'll there will be an introduction talk first. Make sure that you're online. So um, go activate your Wi-Fi if you're not online and connect. I hope you already have the Sherlock, Sherlock uh, open if you, in your browser. If not, please do it, do it now. There will, I will show these links periodically, but make sure that you're online because we will do a practical exercise on Galaxy 7. Uh, the, the goals today will just learn about Galaxy Australia, how to use Galaxy 7. And we will look into variant calling and Galaxy workflow. For the training, we will use a small subset of data from bacterial sequencing. And so you will learn how to use common tools in Galaxy to find variants in a bacterial genome. So a little cover, we'll talk about Galaxy Australia, what it is, how to register in it, and how to use it. Our exercise will cover data imports from a data library, as data manipulation, like changing names. Uh, we'll do a quality control for next-gen sequencing data, or high throughput sequencing data. We will identify variants Signs that are different from a reference sequence in our sample and annotate those variants. At the end, we will create a Galaxy workflow. We will combine all the tools we used today in one thing and we'll run a workflow as a single super tool. Shadow, that Jeff already showed us this link, but please open it now. You can access slides. If you want to follow slides on your computer, there's also a link to a tutorial and link to a discussion board. So if you have a questions, write them down. They will be answered by community. 
right? So everyone with the knowledge can answer the question. <laughs> Uh, we will follow the shiller fairly closely, um, but obviously the timing is approximate. We have 80, more than 80 people on this training session. So the load on the server might be, may vary significantly. Also, JBrowse, job JBrowse is one of the tools we will run, uh, we'll use today. May run for some time, it's just, a it performs a lot of co-creation. So the plan is that we will submit those jobs before the break and we'll have a long break and then we'll talk about variant calling, some aspects of variant calling. After the break we will look on the jobs and go to the next section which is Galaxy Workflow. Now I want to thank all facilitators on every note and and they made the time and help us with this training. Um, Devil Pro members of Devil Project, especially Anna Syme, I borrowed some slides from her and she designed the, designed the, uh, slides, um, so the slide designs from her. Um, my tongue is not named here, but it's sitting next to me and just give me a friendly push if I go out of time. Um, and this training is organized by Amble ABR, so I want to thank Christina and Jeff for this nice opportunity to extend Galaxy training beyond the main hubs. And then all uh, people who came to the workshop, thank you. Um, this is just a very important slide that will and uh, uh, will be shown at the end of the presentation. Uh, the organizations that made this session possible. So what I'll do now, I'll switch this small intro thing and we will talk about Galaxy Australia. If you have any questions again, write it to a discussion board. Galaxy Australia. So Galaxy is a web-based platform for analysis, biological, biological and bioinformatic data. So it's web-based platform, it means that it looks like a website. Uh, the interface is fairly simple, there's three major panels, you've got a list of tools on the left, that's what you can do with Galaxy. Uh, your data is stored in the right window, which is called history. You see, uh, or you work with just one history at a time, but registered users can have multiple histories. History essentially is very similar to a folder or directory in your computer. The, the middle window is working window, it's a multifunctional window where you can uh, preview your data, you can compose a job, you can edit workflow, you can visualize interactive HTML files and do a few other things. So you can get a list of your histories and so on. And there's a small menu on the top and what's important there and then it's selected in orange box. There's a login, a login or register on the right. So that's where you go to register on a server. As a registered user, you also can use things as a Galaxy workflow. You also can use FTP. So while you can use Galaxy without registration, it's beneficial to register. Your data will store for longer. Now, so what is Galaxy? It's a web-based workflow platform for analysis of genomic data. It's designed for biologists, so it means it uh, has a very simple and intuitive interface. Um, you can bring your own data, you can import the public data. Um, the new tools can be installed to Galaxy from so-called Galaxy Toolshare. It's a, like an app store, but the tools are prepared or wrapped in Galaxy. 
uh, I'm using the, 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 the latest chip on and, uh, Toolshed had over 5,000 packages or tools available for installation to Galaxy. So, uh, once you complete the analysis, your data is stored in Galaxy sometime. Moreover, Galaxy has features that allow you to rerun your job so you can get reproducible, you can reproduce your results. You also can share your analysis. So it makes nice collaboration platform for collaboration. Um, there's about, there's more than 90 public Galaxy servers around the globe. Use Gal Galaxy Australia is a part of Use Galaxy families of the servers. The other Use Galaxy servers are located in Europe and the United States. So, what's the idea behind the Use Galaxy? Um, the Use Galaxy servers share some underlying data, like reference genomes and tool containers. The reason behind it that user can get a uniform experience or similar experience on different Galaxy servers. Galaxy Australia is supported by by Devil Project. Um, it's a biodata enhanced virtual lab project. Gareth, Gareth Price is a manager. Uh, this is essentially an evolution of Genomics Virtual Lab. Um, and we aim to provide a fully featured Galaxy server with tool reference requested by Australian researchers. Galaxy Australia is essentially a result of merge of two Gal Galaxy servers, Galaxy Queensland and Galaxy Melbourne. Um, so users from those uh, two servers will migrate to Galaxy Australia. Uh, the reason for this merge is uh, essentially we want to maintain a single server and this will make, we hope this will, the maintenance will be easier for us. Um, so what you'll get, you'll get your space to work on Galaxy. Um, your data will be saved and stored for some time. For details, see our user policy. Once you complete your analysis, again, your data is saved and stored on the Galaxy for a certain amount of time. Certain time. Um, you can rerun your analysis and you can share your data. how it works. So you log in to Galaxy server, use galaxy.org.au. You compose your job, you click on the tool menu, select the tool you like to use, click on it, it'll bring you interface for a tool, you select your data from your history using pull down menu, and hit, hit the submit button. And Galaxy submits a job to a head node, and a head node direct, directs a job to a computer node. Um, it, at the moment, we use from memory at least two locations for real compute. So it's happened in Victoria and Queensland. Uh, in the future, we hope we will be able to use computational resources in other nodes in Nectar. Nectar is a computer cloud for Australian researchers. One that the job completed on a on a, a worker node, it's, it goes back to a head node and displayed to a user on a computer screen. Again, you don't need to worry about underlying under, uh, infrastructure. This is our problem. So, this. so how you use it? You log into a Galaxy, uh, you register, or if you're registered, you 
you're just logging to the server. Usually Galaxy remember you're logging, so it, you probably don't need to do it very often. So if you use it um, regularly, so you may just need to register once and use it for a year or two. Uh, you bring your data, so it's, we'll talk about later, the non-neural analysis, interpret results, save results to external storage. This is very important because we have a time limit on the storage. And then you enjoy your time. There's several ways how you can put data in your computer first. You can put data uh, from, you put your data on Galaxy. You can upload it from local computer. And local computer can be a, a storage attached to your computer. For example, University of Queensland provide, library at the University of Queensland provide uh, attachable storage. That's one terabyte for UQ users. You can attach it as external drive. And you can import this data directly in Galaxy. It's so considered as a part of your computer. You can upload data from a remote computer essentially throws a, a link. It can be URL or FTP. If you paste a, paste a link with FTP, Galaxy will activate FTP protocol for you and import the data. You can import data directly from a public repository, like a, a reader hive. Galaxy is also connected to UCC genome browser, so you can you, uh, you can analyze data on the browser, say to intersection, and import files back to Galaxy. You also can import shared data from users. Note that Galaxy Australia provides public data. So that's like genome sequences, aligner indices, popular da databases like uh, DPSNP, that's a database of human variants. Uh, the advantage is uh, public data. Public data sets are not counted towards user quota. So in order to use your quota efficiently, you want to use public data as much as possible. Not that we do create so-called data library on demand for a user, a user. So if you want to use a public data set or if you want a latest release of DB SNP or uh, genome annotation, let us know and it's highly likely we'll create a data library, especially if it's on a popular species. How you use tools? So those tools are grouped in categories. Uh, you, the names are very intuitive, so quality control, um, faster manipulation. So you can click on a category and you will see a list of tools. There's also a small search box on the, on the top. So if you know the name of a tool, like BWA or Thai, you just put a name and it will give you a short list of tools. March, voice, March is your query. Once you click on a tool, you get a tool interface. That's where you can select a public data like a reference genome you select your files for your data from history using pull down menu. You can change parameters and you just hit execute button. So there is no page scripting, no programming. The results will go in your history. You can preview the data upload. Um, so, the, sorry, uh, your results are listed on in the right window. Uh, what you can have in your history is so all important data, your results. Um, as, a, as, a, as mentioned earlier, as a user, you can have multiple histories. And you can copy, share, and delete those histories through the history menu. Uh, note that data sets in your history are read only. Um, what does it mean? Imagine that you have a gene annotation, say 20,000 genes, and you want to add two more genes. If you have a text document on your computer, you just edit the text and save it with the same name. You cannot do this in Galaxy. 
In Galaxy, you have to append those new genes and create a new database. The reason is that you don't want to screw up your primary data. So in Galaxy, you cannot edit any data sets. Any modification to data sets have to be saved as a new file. This means that your primary data, your results of a sequencing, always will be intact. Now, Galaxy History System. Uh, on the top of a history panel, you have a history menu. This is cog, uh, cog wheel icon, it's look like a star wheel. And there's a refresh button, a vortex button. It has actually different function. Uh, this button appears in different places and it has slightly different function. In history menu, it just refreshes the history frame. Galaxy uses color coding for jobs. The gray means that your job is waiting in a queue. When we'll submit jobs today, they will stay gray for some time. We have more than 80 people on the training. It will take some time for Galaxy to assemble the jobs and send it to the cluster. Now, running, the yellow thing, the green is completed. If the job fails, it's come with a red color and uh, uh, a white cross. Uh, if you click on a name uh, of a failed job, you'll see a small bug icon. This is error report. Uh, usually it says an information that tell you why your job has failed. Some jobs may pause it because it depends on, those jobs depend on, on output of a failed job. Uh, all data sets in Galaxy history are numbered according to the time they were created. There's two views of a data set. The compact view when you just see a file and three icons. The eye, eye icon, that's a preview. It's allow you to do, to preview different files. Edit, you can change name and data types and you can assign data sets to a particular genome assembly. Delete is obvious. If you click a name, uh, your appearance will change to expanded view, where you can see extra information. The expanded view depends on type of data, so it's different for different data types. Uh, what's important, you get a database. It means that you can assign your data to a particular genome assembly. This is a very useful feature. You remember that you work with particular genome build. It's also a preview um, to give you, among other things, na numbers and name for columns. How you use the data? You click on the eye icon and you'll see a preview in the middle, the middle of working window. Uh, Galaxy doesn't display all data sets and just give you a preview of the start of a file. The current version of Galaxy provides preview for binary files such as BAM, uh, alignment file, or compressed FASTQ file, which is the FASTQ files. So it's uh, decompress the files and shows you, shows you a text option, text version of those files. The other useful buttons, uh, there is an upload menu, upload uh, uh, icon uh, that gives you and uh, brings the upload menu on the top of a tool panel. Also, you also can hide uh, the side panels uh, if you want. If you look on genome viewer or your data set is very big, so you can hide both tools and data and history panel. Other useful things that you can display all histories in parallel. Uh, and we already talked about refresh. So let's get started. What we want to do now, we want to log into Galaxy Australia and you, and you need to open variant calling bacteria tutorial. 
the recommended browsers here, Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. We usually have a stable results, but you no know, best results with those browsers. Um, if you already, if you're a new user, you just register on Galaxy Australia. If you already registered on the server, please create a new history. What you may want to do, if possible, open a link to Galaxy Australia and to the tutorial in the separate tabs. If your screen is not big enough, it's, it's okay to have um, this as a, as a two or two tabs, not, not in parallel. So what we will do, I will uh, go through the tutorial. So you can follow the tutorial either on screen, because I will do it very, very slow. Uh, you can follow tutorial on the website. So you have two options here. Uh, the comments about the training website, it's a, the, the, web, the site with training has a dynamic structure. It means that its appearance depends on the zoom or the size of your screen. So what I see on the screen may differ from what you see on the screen. So what you can do, you click on these three short parallel lines and let's bring the menu. Um, if you see this hat that people got after the, when they graduate from the university, uh, you should be able to see the menu with training materials. We are after workflow calling bacteria. So click on it and that's what you will need. Now, I will leave this link for some time. So we need to use galaxy.org.au. So go to this website and uh, open the training. Note that if you follow the presentation from the scheduler, a presentation has clickable links. So what I can do now, I you can open it from the presentation. So I'll exit from the full mode of a presentation. Right. And I'll just keep the slide for some time. So we'll just give it like a few minutes for people to open Use Galaxy, Galaxy Australia website, usegalaxy.org.au and open a tutorial. So this, this slide will stay for some time. Let's give it, say, five, five minutes. Just to show if you're a new person, you have a Galaxy Australia. It's on the top, top menu, there's option, login or register. So if you're a new user, you click login. I can make it a little bit bigger. Uh, if you, if you, if you register it, login. If you're a new user, click register. I'm already registered on the server, so I just log in on it. And I use, Because I already have a history. So if you're an existing user, go to a history menu and create a new history. So we now have a name of history. If you are just registered, that's what you will see. You see your Galaxy Australia link, you can see tools, and empty history with no data.
We are going on schedule now, so we're supposed to start at 1.40. I will talk to, talk, we'll talk about variant calling. So we have a three more minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, this is again, if you log in, so that's the time to write questions to the discussion board. And we're just waiting for people who may have problem with internet connection or Right, now we'll talk about variant calling. Again, make sure, the most important thing, make sure that you are registered in Galaxy Australia and you have a variant calling bacteria tutorial open. So what, what we mean by identification of variants uh, or variant calling. Um, so imagine that you have a reference genome. It can be a bacterial genome or human genome. And you want to find positions in a sample that you work with that are different from the reference sequence. So what you do, you extract DNA from either bacterial culture or it can be a human sample, create a library, put it on a sequencing machine, you get millions, maybe tens of millions sequences or reads. And then you analyze these reads and you, at the end, you came with a list, you have a list of variants that are different from a reference sequence and your genome and the reference genome. So 
it's not, so the diff, the main feature here is that for a sample, you are not dealing, for your sample, you're not dealing with a whole genome sequence now. You're dealing with just a list of differences. Say, uh, in human genomes, the, uh, the human genome, we expect uh, variants uh, in every, in one position out of 1,000. So instead of handling three billion sequences, we may have just say maybe three million variants or something like this. So you work with a smaller data set. Now we will not talk about the lab procedure, not talk about sequencing. We will talk about data analysis only. So in the past we used Sanger sequencing or ABI sequencing machines to find the variant. So we'll sequence normal sample and a tumor sample or uh, uh, original strain and a mutated strain with Sanger sequence. We'll compare sequences of chromatograms and we see a peak, different peaks, say this has G and uh, this has A. We call it a variant. Now with this approach you can identify a few variants. Uh, with high throughput sequencing, you analyze data on a genome scale. So you can, say with human genome, you can identify millions of variants in a single experiment. So you, what you do, you create a library, so you take genomic DNA, fragment it somehow, and you create a library. And you put this library in a sequencing machine, and you get many reads. So you have to map those reads to a reference genome. And some of your reads may have a substitution, say caused by PCR. So you have to deal with noise. And your variant depends on coverage. So you identify variants in regions of certain coverage when you have a number of reads supporting of alternative allele. So instead of a two sequences or two chromatograms, you deal with a reference genome, you deal with alignments, you have a huge, you deal with a huge amount of data, you're looking on a coverage. So that's a feature of next-gen sequencing data. First, you deal with huge data sets, so it's like tens of millions of sequences. You sequence a random library. It means that you don't know for every for any sequence where it came from. So you have to analyze it first. You have to map it to reference genome. So you use uh, specialized software and dedicated data formats, and you use public data, a lot of it. So you use reference genome. You use gene annotations if you want to find what the what those variants are doing. The advantage is that you can identify variants on a genome scale, and you can get low frequency variants if you work with the cancers, uh, cancer samples when a tumor occupy 10% of your sample, and you still can identify these variants. You can det detect structural variants like chromosomal rearrangements, but we, this, this is not covered in the workshop. The other features is that you need, there's no uniform or standard pipeline for everyone. Your analysis depends on many parameters, including the organism you work with um, and many other things. Uh, it depends also on, on sequencing technology. Those two graphs below shows you variants identified by in data obtained by two sequencing platform, Illumina and the latest sequencing machine from BGI. So the gray areas represent variants identified by two platforms. The colored uh, uh, yellow and blue areas represents variants identified just by one platform. So um, the number of variants you get 
So it depends on what sequencing platform you use. Uh, you can increase the level of or proportion of variants identified by both platforms uh, with extra sequencing. So the read coverage is crucial. This is very simplified pipeline for identification variants with next gen sequencing data. So we'll take our the reads, LN reads two genomes with tool like BWL Botch High. And then we search for difference between reference and aligned reads. Always popular tools like free bias, we can use MPLAB or GTK. And then we annotate variants. And then we'll do a lot, usually we do extra steps like a quality control, retraining, we do uh, indel realignment, quality score recalibration, and so on. But in, in a very basic way, we just map reads and we find, select the sides that are different from a reference. Um, so in this pipeline, we deal with specific data formats. The reads come in the FASTQ format. The reference is usually in the FASTQ format. We will use reference in GeneBank because the GeneBank file also has, also has FASTQ. Alignment is in a BAM format. And the variance can be in PILAP or VCF. Um, again, this is just a fraction of a format that can be used in variant calling. What we will do now, we will talk about these data types because we have we may have people who are never work with high throughput sequencing data. So we want them to know what they will see. FASTQ format. So this bit of terminology, read is a sequence with a quality score. And the FASTQ files can have multiple reads. So usually you get maybe millions of reads in a single file. Each read is described by four lines. And usually FASTQ files are compressed with GC, just to save a space. So um, this is an example of FASTQ read. So name is always start with add character. And it's usually very long. See this slash one at the end here? That means this is a forward read. Be careful with spaces in names. Some tools are very sensitive to the, uh, to the read names. Um, usually the text string before the first space character is considered as a read name. Uh, everything after the first space character is uh, common. Sequence is easy to skip it. Uh, the third line is a separator and it always starts with plus. It may have name, it may have the same name as uh, the first line, it may have a different name. And the fourth line has encoded thread quality score. This is a measure of confidence or quality uh, of in identification for every nucleotide. And this is a very important concept. We'll talk about fast, fast QC thread quality score. So this is an integer and it's uh, calculated, it's an essentially it's log transformed probability of incorrect identification. Usually uh, for NGS data, uh, the thread quality score is usually an integer in the range between zero and 40. In FASTQ files, usually you don't see those numbers because the values are encoded by ASCII characters. But the reason is that it's, it's, it's a convenient way uh, because you don't need to write two digit number under a single uh, character that corresponding corresponding to nucleotide. So how we encode the quality score? So we take a quality score value, say 39, and we, we add a constant called offset 33, get the number 72, and we'll get a, 
a character from an ASCII table from a position of 72. Good. Now, the ASCII table is essentially provide you a connection, provide a link between strings of yes and no that used by computer and the characters you see on the computer screen. Uh, the start of the ASCII table is reserved from characters that you cannot see on the screen, like escape or cancel. That's why we use offset. The first visible character occupied position 33 and specified by this red arrow. This exclamation mark. Now, in the past, it's a bit complicated, but in the past, Illumina used uh, a proprietary offset of 64. Well, they started with technologies that had the negative polity score. Um, why is the problem? It is a problem if you work with data from public repository that was created by Illumina sequencing machine, say, seven, six years ago. Um, it's very easy to see a difference. The old Illumina encoding has uh, lowercase characters, while Sanger or 33 offset has numbers. So what's happened in Galaxy? This is true. Uh, this is true uh, for the current version of Galaxy. When you upload a FastQ file, Galaxy by default will unzip it. And if it's get a offset such as three, Galaxy will assign FastQ Sanger data type. If it's an uh, offset, scan with offset 64, Galaxy assign FastQ data type. So you have to run FastQ Groomer tool that will convert 64 encoding to Sanger encoding. Now Galaxy support compressed FastQ files, and but you have to specify this data type manually during upload. Now we will actually go a little bit faster. This is the most complicated and difficult part. Unfortunately, this is also the first things that people deal with when connection sequencing data. So we spend them some time on it. Reference genome. So it's a consensus representation of a genome, usually came as a faster file. It often has unmapped contigs, not just assembled chromosomes. What's important here, genomes have the many assembly versions. With human genome, we now at the assembly version 38. Uh, why it's important? Many genomic data are coordinate based, means there is no sequence. So the features are described by position in genome assembly. So make sure that you use the, the genomic data from the same genome assembly. So if you map read to AG19, use gene annotation for AG19. Aligners, aligners map reads to a reference sequence. There's two types of aligners, uh, non-gapped or genomic aligners, BWA, BWMN, or BOTINE, that's the most popular aligners. Gapped aligners can run, can map RNA data, so they can map reads through introns. The popular versions are top hat and high sat. High sat 2 is advanced aligners that also can map genomic data, so it has two options, uh, two options, so it's uh, gapped aligner and non-gapped aligners. Not that aligners do not actually use FASTA files directly in the mapping, they first index uh, reference sequence and then use index files for mapping. Galaxy Australia provide indices for probably close to 200 genome assemblies, so it's better to use provided, uh, provided indices, it's fast, so you don't need to compute it every time. But users also can put a custom sequence in their history and use it for mapping. Alignments came in a SAM or BAM format. BAM is a binary option, a binary version of SAM format, which is text format. BAM files are indexed for rapid access. Usually they have header. It's not compulsory, but very useful. Header has some information about uh, sorting order of the files, uh, lengths of all contexts, and what's interesting is it also has a program line that tell you what software was used to produce this alignment. 
If you modify a line alignment, say you filter it somehow, you'll get an extra PG line. Keep in mind that BAM files in Galaxy are coordinate sorted by default. When you upload BAM files in Galaxy, the Galaxy will sort it. Same format. So, this is an alignment, and on the top you see an alignment as we see, uh, as, we, as we got to used to. So it's a reference sequence uh, and the position on the top. Imagine they got reads aligned to this genome. The star characters represent gaps. Uh, low case means that this part of sequence is not mapped. So this is alignment how we normally use it in biology. And this is some file is shown at the bottom. First, uh, look on the read 001. It's a paired read, so it's got slash one, slash two. In the same file, there is no slash one, slash two. But the information about that, that this, those reads are paired is recorded in the cell second column with the flag values. Now, the third column shows you name of a reference sequence, and the fourth column shows your position. Um, read three is hymetic reads that mapped to two position. As you see, there is two records for the read three in the same file, because same file creates a single one line per alignment. Uh, it also is not shown here, but alignments usually have non-mapped reads, unless you specify that you don't want to keep those files. It also has a sequence and a quality score. Those are can without quality score, and they're not shown. Um, those, those files are not designed for human eyes, so they're designed to work with computers. And we usually use dedicated tools like um, genome browsers or genome views for, to look on the, on the BAM file. So they convert those SAM files or BAM files into nice and pleasant picture as shown on the right. Today we will use a tool called JBrowse. Now, um, in alignment, we see information about every MAM tree. What we are interested, we are actually interested in a consensus sequence. So what's happened during variant calling? We essentially transpose alignment. And instead of recording information about every read, we record information about every position in the reference genome, cover it by alignment. So see, we go from mapped reads to a consensus. The popular format is a pileup, as a specification and provided in a green box. Uh, it uses characters where it, it shows a lot of info, it shows a significant amount of information. It shows where the read, uh, this position covered by a read in a plus orientation or minus orientation. And if it's a not matching nucleotide, it shows you what nucleotide is present in the read. Now, the popular format for VCF uh, for variants is the variant calling format. It's made from three sections. Meta information, it's, that's what it described, where you can find description for all talks used in the data. You get a header line with the name of a column and the information for every variant identified in your data. Here we usually deal with variants, so there's positions that are different from a reference genome. Now, we are getting closer to the tutorial. Today we will uh, call, we will use variant calling bacteria tutorial. So what we will do, we'll import files from a data library, change names. We will estimate read quality with a tool called FastQ. Then we will use a tool called Snippy. And Stippy is a very smart tool. It's actually a pipeline. It uses reference as a gene bank format. And it can call variants and it can it will it will call variants and will annotate variants as a single step. 
After that, we will uh, run, uh, we'll use a tool to JBrowse and we will visualize alignment and the variance. So this will be a first part of our training. And the second part will create workflow from this pipeline. Now, I exit the workflow and we will start tutorial. All right, so we are roughly on time. We're supposed to start at two o'clock. So what we need now, we need Galaxy Australia and you can follow me from tutorial, variant calling bacteria. Uh, or you can just watch me, what I do on screen. Uh, that's interesting that my screen is now, so I'll make it like this. So, uh, uh, because I want to keep um, Galaxy window exposed to you, visible to you, so I will use a printout. So, the first, uh, make sure that you are registered to check it. You go in user menu and see that I am registered. So the first one we'll do, we will import the data from a data library. So in top Galaxy menu, go to shared data and to data libraries. It's many data libraries, what we need Galaxy Australia training materials. Galaxy Australia training materials. We're doing variant calling. So we go to variant calling and we do microbial variant calling. Uh, if, if I click it too fast, the full path is written here on the top. It's Galaxy Australia training material, variant calling, microbial variant calling. So we select all files. You can click on name, you can click them separately. And we'll import it to a history. We will import them, those files as data sets. We can import it as a name and history, but we may import it in, we can import it in a new history. And let's call it bacterial variant calling. So this will create a new history and place these data sets into it. So, when it's completed, you can click on this green box, start analyzing it. I'll keep it for a while, just a little. So um, it's slow. So there's a other way of doing things. You can click on Galaxy Australia, and this is a clickable icon. And this will bring us Galaxy interface. So see this, those data sets have very long reads. We want to shorten those reads as a practice. So we click on the pencil icon, edit attributes. So we'll do, we will remove the common part and save the data set. We'll do this for all files in our history. So click on pencil icon, put a cursor to the last dash and click save. Click on pencil.
So we have five files in the history. The two files have uh, with reads mute and R1, fast two files. The name actually doesn't tell you much. The, main, the name can be different. So if you click on the name, you'll see expanded expanded view. So it's tell you that base data set in fast two single data type. There is a sneak preview here, the bottom. But you also can preview the data set by clicking on the eye icon. So you see that every read name starts with add character. Cut sequence, it's followed by a plus strand. The third line separator is empty. And this is thread encoded thread quality score. This is paired in data. A paired in reads usually came in two files. And most tools expect that paired in files have exactly the same number of reads in exactly in the same position. So what we've done so far, we imported files from data library and we modified file names. So now we will run the first job in Galaxy and this will be quality control. Uh, quality controls are usually very important because you deal with huge data set. So you expect a certain amount of low quality data. You just want to have a small number of low quality reads. Um, in tool section, go to QC and manipulation. QC and manipulation and click on name. So I made a big answer, right? And there's a tool called FastQC. We now in the section quality control in the tutorial. Uh, if you're familiar with the tool, so you can type FastQC in a search section and it'll give you a, a shorter list of tools. So click on the tool. This will bring you a menu. Make it a little bit bigger. People can see it. Um, Galaxy. In Galaxy, you can submit multiple jobs in parallel. That's what we will do in a day. And we will select multiple data sets. This is overlapping sheets of paper. This called, uh, this activate multiple data set mode. If you have many files, you can change the size of this window. Just put cursor and you can drag it. But we have just two FastQC files. So what's important here, we have five files in our history, but FastQC2 shows only two files uh, because we have only two FastQ files. FastQC doesn't work with FASTA or GeneBank or Gene Annotation file. So what we will do, we will select two files, uh, use Shift and make sure that those data sets are colored. Scroll down and click execute. So you see my jobs are gray. So it means that cluster is preparing the job for execution. Now they're tuned yellow. Those jobs are running now. As I said earlier, we have over 80 people on this training session. So some of your jobs may be queued for um, some time. 
So don't be surprised with that. Um, So I'll keep this, the tool section filtered. That's to show that we need a fast QC tool. What I can do, just to make sure that people are catching up, uh, if I click on the name of a completed job, there is a rerun button. So I made it even bigger. So uh, if you click on, if I click on the results of a completed job, there is a vortex or rerun button. What it does, it shows, if I click on it, it shows me settings of the job that was used. Because it's an output of a single job, so it doesn't show me multiple files. But what I do, I'll just change. So we need to put multiple data sets and you need to select the two files. So we will for some time to make sure that everyone is on the same page. So what you need, you need a fast QC tool. You can find it in QC and manipulation section in tool menu, or you can type fast QC in a search box, search and filter box, and you see a limited list of the tools. When you click on a tool, you'll see a tool menu, and you want to go to multiple data sets. Once you get the multiple data sets, select both mutant files, and hit execute button at the end. So while the job is running, what I'll do, I'll demonstrate the output of uh, FastQC. FastQC produces two files. So the one is a raw data. Uh, so I'll hide the tool panel. Remember we talked about this useful icons. So we'll just hide it. The raw data, if you want to use your own uh, visualizer and look on numbers, but there's also a web page. So it shows you a statistic. So this data set has 12,000 sequences and it's very good quality. Uh, you can download HTML file on your computer if you like, and you can look at it on your computer if you want. I'll hide the second panel. I'll just go through the we need to make a screen a little bit smaller. So this is the base quality score. This, this graph shows distribution of a quality score over read lengths. What the software does is pile all the reads and look at the position one and pull the distribution for every read. We'll talk about it later. Let's get you a distribution of a quality score per read is relatively high. 34. A nucleotide composition. So you see that the numbers of A and T's are identical and it's it's horizontal line. So it's a it's a very good quality data. So we don't have any reason to worry about. If you work with spirit and data, make sure that you both files have exactly the same number of reads.
So uh, while the job is running, so FASCI C is uh, independent, like the next job is independent of results of a FASCI C. So we will, even if your job queued or still running, and don't worry, it doesn't affect next step. So what we will do now, we will call variance with snippy. Just type snippy in a search box or go to variant calling snap section and click on snippy. I'll make it bigger again. Snippy. Uh, Snippy can use gene bank file as a reference. Um, a full gene bank file has sequence and gene annotation. And that's why Snippy can annotate um, variants. So we as input file, we select, select wild type gene bank, GBK, and we need to, we have paired end data. So we need to select forward reads, R1, as uh, forward and reverse reads. Now, make sure that you click on select all. So make sure that you have all boxes clicked on output files. Uh, the terminology is, uh, different terminologies used for forward and reverse reads can be first reads, second reads. Uh, Basically, every fragment in the library can be sequenced from both ends, and usually forward or first reads are sequenced first, and the second reads are reverse, reverse reads sequenced after, the, after those reads. Yeah. So this is a setup. I'll keep it for some time. So we need Snippy. As a reference, we use wild type gene bank file. We have paired and sequencing data. We use R1 as a forward reads or first reads, and we use, for the second reads, we use R2. What's important in advanced parameters, select all boxes, just clicking on this, this box. Once you've done it, click execute. I will not click execute, so I'll just wait for people to do this. All right, so what I can do, I can click, I click execute. So my job is to turn it gray. So it's waiting for execution. And in the meantime, I, I use the run button. It shows me all settings that were used to submit this job. So I submitted the job and I can show you settings used to submit the job. Uh, while this job is running, um, waiting, sorry, not even running for me. So what I can do, I can refresh history. It's still queuing. Snippy produced many, many files. It produces files in, uh, with variants, SNP in VCF format. It produces uh, in general feature format, and it produces produce a, a simple text file or table with variants. It gives you a summary, give you a log, um, and it also provides you with alignment. And for convenience, Snippy also pack all these files into an um, archive, so you can download all files just as a one file.
Oh, my job is running. So you, as you see, uh, even with small data sets, the queuing time may be in, in minutes. Uh, as well, as I said, we have 80 people using this server in, simultaneously. And this is a research server, so scientists use it all the time with big data sets. Uh, this morning I checked it and we, uh, we had a, a couple big blast jobs running. And high side two jobs on the server. So Snippy is, in fact, a pipeline. In the log file, you see the tools that are used are used to create the results. So my job is finished. Let's spend some time looking on the output. Uh, in Snippy files, I go and find a file called SNP stable. And I click on the I icon. So just to make clear what file is used, I click on the name to expand it. So it's SNP table. I also hide the tool panel. So what this file says, it's a chromosome as well thought. That's the name of a faster sequence. It shows your position, type of a variance, whether it's a, a substitution, was this deletion, insertion, or maybe a complex polymorphic side. It shows you reference sequence and alternative allele, evidence, this is bacterial genome, so we don't have a heterozygote variant, so we expect only um, homozygote variants, if it's possible to say. Um, where these mutations happen, you see most of them are in coding regions. Now, this is a bacteria genome that's basically is made of coding regions. And there is an effect, what's happened here. Synonymous is stop gain variant, and there's even a gene annotation, so you get uh, some resistance protein. So if you work with bacteria, SNPY is probably the best tool, or the easiest tool for you to get meaningful results with annotation. That's very fast and convenient way. Um, the other thing what you can do, find the file, BAM file, and then click on the I. It will show you a header and the alignment. Uh, this is a new feature in Galaxy. In the past, Galaxy was unable to, to view binary files, such as BAM files. Oh. Oh. So, um, let's wait for some time to make sure that people are on the same stage. But, um, you actually, in Galaxy, you don't need to wait for completion of a job if you want to use the output of this job on the next step. Because Galaxy creates metadata in the history for you. So the next job actually will know that this file, this particular file, will be there. So if you already submitted the file, you can just do what we do on completed job. And we will create a, we will create a genome viewer option using two JBrows. So what we will do is select J, J browse. 
make sure that you click on jbrowse, not data directory. Right? So we need jbrowse. jbrowse. Um, this is a complicated step. This is very complicated step. So we'll probably spend the next few minutes um, composing this job. And the plan is that we submit the job and then we will have a break. Because this job usually runs for some time. So to make things easy, I'll hide the history panel and I'll make everything bigger. Right. So again, if your snippet job is not completed, it's still queued, you still can do this step. You don't need to wait for completion of a snippet job to submit the next job. So we will use a reference genome from a history. For reference genome, we will use wild type FASTA file. This FASTA file is identical to sequence in a gene bank file. You stand alone instance. Now, this is bacteria, so we want to put a proper code, which is bacterial, archival, and plant plastic code. We we'll use new jbrowse instance. Now, so what we've done here, we selected the reference sequence to use to be used as a reference genome for visualization. Now we want to add data that we want to visualize. So we will add three different tracks. First, we want to add BAM alignment. You remember that I should briefly showed the preview of a BAM file. So let's give it a name, sequence reads. That's all the track category. And now we need to select the track. So this is a BAM file. So we need to select BAM pileup format. And it's the only file in our history. Only BAM, BAM file in our history. We also want to auto-generate a uh, variant track, SNP track. And we put so you can put uh, visibility on for new users. So in this so far, we provided information. Uh, we provided, uh, we added just one track. Now we want to add file with variants. So again, we click on add track group, add new track group. And we call it variants. We insert annotation track. So we will use um, variants identified by SNPI in GFF format. So that will be this file. Make sure that you click on those files.
And now we want to add gene annotation. Again, we add, insert another track. We insert another track group, new track group. We call it annotated reference, you can call it genes. Again, so we, once we name it the track category, and we want to add the track. So it's a gene annotation and we select well type GFF. Once we're done, went through all these steps, click execute. Now, this is very complicated, uh, complicated step. Uh, uh, it is very well described in the training manual. Uh, what I can do, oh, it's my job is already running. I'll do exactly the same thing as before. So I put the settings back for people to see. And I hide the tool panel. Yes. Uh, as this is the most complicated step for training, uh, we will have a break until 2.50. It's uh, for 15 minutes, right? So this is the time for you to complete this step. So don't rush, just go through the training manual, through the tutorial carefully, and select all parameters, all right? So we have a break until 2.50. And even after that, we will have a discussion for about maybe 10 minutes on variant calling before we will go to the next step. So you still have time to compose this job. What's important here, that you use JBrowse, not data directory. So um, I will go through the composition again. So in, J in tool section, type JBrowse and click on JBrowse, JBrowse Genome Browser. Um, default option, it, it, in the, by default, it works with provided with genomes provided by Galaxy, built-in genomes. We want to use it with genome from a history because we used a, f a reference file from our history. Right. So we, in a reference genome to display, we reference genome to display. We switch to use genome from history, and we select faster. Wildtype faster file. Wildtype faster file has a faster sequence identical to that in GeneBank file we used for variant calling with Snippy. So, because we work with bacteria, we want to specify a dedicated code. It's very similar to the, the basic code, but it's maybe minor difference. So we, in genetic code, we switch to bacterial, archive, and plant plastic code. We use new JBrowse instance. 
Now we want to add the track groups. So click on a tool on button called insert track group, insert track group. Just moment. So insert a track group. The first thing you want to visualize is uh, alignment. So I want to add alignment. We call this track category sequence reads. You can call it alignment. Sequence reads is okay. So once you give a name, you need to add annotation track. So you click add annotation track. And in the pull down menu, you select PEM file. So that's the only BAM file we have here. Uh, so switch auto generate SNP track to yes. Add, after that, add another track group and call it variance. This is for SNPs identified by snippet. We will use annotation in general feature format, GFF. So we'll keep it as a default and we'll attach and we'll select the file produced by snippet. Snippy on data, SNP GFF. And the last, we add another track group. And for this, we, we add annotated genes. We call it annotated reference. It's came in GFF format. And we use wild type GFF for this. That's what we probably eat. So what you basically do, you insert a new track group. So the track group is a type of a data you want to display. It's for example, alignment. So you can display multiple alignment within one track group. If you want to display multiple tracks, you add extra track. So we have three track groups. The one track group is for alignment. The second track group is for variant, variance. And the third track group for gene annotation, reference annotation. So once you created a track group, you insert annotation tracks. We insert just one annotation track for every group. You can insert multiple tracks if you have uh, multiple data sets. Say, if you called variants from a two samples, you can add variants from two samples to the same reference. If you use one reference from a variant column. This is very complicated task because it requires a lot of it require it requires a lot of attention to details. Again, we have a break now, and we will have a general discussion after the break. So don't be in, don't hurry. Just swap between the training manual and select all track. Select the all tracks correctly. Uh, 
and you can watch the slides. So those are just extra notes. And this will help us to, like, this basically will fill the time when we wait for jobs to be, for JBrowse jobs. Um, we saw this big, uh, pictures in FastQC, um, but FastQC gives you a uh, color warning about the results. You get a red signal for suspicious quality, but you need to interpret the results. On this slide, I have two outputs on the quality score uh, uh, from FastQC. Just, um, just to explain what those uh, graphs means. The red line means that it's a median. It means that half reads, have, half reads in this position have a quality above the red line and half below the red line. Yellow boxes represent two quartiles. That means that 25% reads have a quality in the yellow box above the red line, and 25% of your reads have a quality below the red line. Uh, the viscous represent 10 and 90% percent percentiles. So the reads on the left are marked as a bad quality, and the reads on the right is excellent quality. But the reads on the left are 250 nucleotides long. If you look at the, the range of 100 nucleotides, you actually see the quality is comparable to that for the second data set. So if you have excessive data and you, and you don't need long reads, you might trim the reads and you get the same quality of the data. The other example is one of my favorite. Uh, this is not genomic DNA sequence, this is RNA, RNA sec data. This is nucleotide composition. So you, what you see a distribution A, T, C, G along the read, read legs. There's two unusual things. First, you see a wobbling in a nucleotide composition at the start of the reads. And number of A's are not, proportion of A's are not equal to proportion of T's. So the complementary nucleotides by two part have different proportion. And if you sequence read uh, DNA or RNA at random, you do not expect that. So what's the problem? Actually, there's no problem, it's excellent data. So first, uh, variable or wobbler changing nucleotide composition is very common for RNA sec data prepared with Illumina kits. Second, uh, Illumina has trans-specific, some of the Illumina kits for RNA sec are trans-specific. And what you see here is very nice illustration of Shibarsky rule uh, that coding regions are overrepresented, uh, purines are overrepresented in coding region. So it's excellent, uh, excellent data, but the fast QC may give you a warning here. So you need to interpret it. Another situation is a chip sec data when you see overrepresented motifs, so overrepresented sequences. Uh, you'll see uh, overrepresented sequences in RNA sec data. So don't be scared with the red sign. Sometimes actually it's good to have. Now, back to these slides that I showed. Uh, on RNA sec workflow, oh sorry, on a variant calling workflow, we use Snippy, which is a, a pipeline that does everything for you. What if you working with eukaryotic, uh, eukaryotic genomes, like say animal genomes, human genome? Well, in Galaxy Australia, you can use BWA, BWA MEM, uh, and Bota as aligners. Uh, the indices are available for hundred dozens or hundred genomes, depending on uh, a line. Uh, for variant calling, you may use a traditional approach from a SEM tool, so you can use MPLAB, 
five point, or you can use three bars and give you a list of variants. For annotation, Galaxy Australia provides SNPF2. Now, how you do it with tools, uh, standard tools like BWA, um, make sure that you work with the same version of a tool. See, it's highlighted in red cycle. Um, when you click on a tool in Galaxy, you'll get the latest version. So if you analyzed your data, say, six months ago, or whatever, a year ago, and came back to Galaxy, it is possible that this tool, the tool you used, is updated. So if you click on a tool, you might get a different version. Um, if you use built-in genome, you remember in Snippy, we select a genome from history the default settings that allow us to use built-in genomes. Um, the dis you see a uh, generally good description, like say for human, say homo uh, name of a species, and DBK at the end. This is an assembly ID. What's important that it is also, it's not galaxy specific. It also allows you to deal with assemblies uh, in external services. So if you got a BAM file created by Botai2 or BWA in the built-in genome with DBK, this animal genome, you can use a link in extended view to UCC main genome browser or IGV local browser. And that those, through those links, you can visualize alignments either on UCC or on your local computer and through this DBK or assembly ID. Like with JBrowse, you can load multiple tracks and annotation to this viewers. Variant calling. So if you go, if you decided to go with MPLAB variants, keep in mind that MPLAB first called by consensus for every position in alignment. And so the use, please use compressed output. So the proper, the best settings or recommended setting is BCF and set compressed output to yes. Once you get a pileup file, no, that's, once you get a, a consensus file for every alignment, you select positions that are different from the reference genome. For this, you use PCF, you can use PCF tools call option tool. It's available in Galaxy Australia. This will give you a list of variants. <coughs> Sorry, this might. Um, if you use a free bias, um, it gives you a list of variants directly, the same as a snippet. So. Um, free bias provides you with extra options, so you can select different models, like depending whether you work with bacterial data or deployed organisms. Uh, variant annotation. Uh, currently, Galaxy Australia does not provide SNP databases. So you have to, so that the annotations have to be imported from the online source. How you do it, you select uh, the, the file with variants you want to annotate. And uh, for genome source, you, you, you switch to name it on demand, and you type a gene ID. That's where, where DBK, like AG19, uh, can be handy. SNPF not just annotates variants, it also gives you a nice HTML file with statistics on variants. It shows you how many frame shifts Got synonymous, non synonymous variant. So it's it's very user friendly software. Right? So we completed 
this talk and we'll just wait for feedback from facilitator and hopefully the the J browse job is completed not completed now so what's um, J browse once you go with it if you click on the eye view it will show you genome So, one, so I clicked on the eye view on JBrowse job and just to make things bigger, I'll hide the side panels. We don't need those things anymore, at least for this section. So this is genome, which is so you see a translation in six frames. You can change it if you want. You want to tick the tracks. Once you tick a track, you'll see the annotation appeared here. Put a BAM file, those are reads that we map to genome and the position. So you see the position here and it's written above the reference. You add a cold variance, so it's a coverage track. And we add a file with variance. So oops, this is one of the variants annotated in this region. What would be the most interesting? We just type if you type a position forty seven two nine nine and you hit go. So that's a position in what we see here. Those are substitutions in the read in the same position. You see that reads have substitution in other places, but they are scattered. Either randomly or not randomly, we don't know. The coverage track also shows you a variant, and this is annotated, variant annotated by snippet. So what you can do, you can just so you can browse around and we have, for this we have a few minutes. So instead of uh, like looking on the text file in alignment, it, you get a nice picture uh, with annotated genes. So if you hover over the gene, that's a one of those genes with the stop gains, uh, anti methicillin resistance regulatory proteins. And this is an annotation and it's a stop gain. So it's a stop mutant. Um, nonsense mutation in coding region.
can make a liquid smaller. Um, you can change appearance of a node. So if you put on a track name, say like display, you can put it at the compact mode or collapse mode. Uh, you can edit a configuration, but this, this is the one feature, so we we'll by this. Uh, if you want to change a color, things like this, you can change it here. But this is, again, I wouldn't recommend it to do it for a tutorial. So to get an advanced menu, there's a pull down menu on the files. Say what, for example, the display mode does. If you want to put it in a compact mode, you get very collapsed view of alignment. So if you have multiple alignment track, this might be useful. So again, uh, we had a question how to change a color for variants. So you, what you can do, um, sorry, this is not in the coverage. So you, if you scroll down to menu, in this, uh, open a pull down menu and You, might try, you can edit the configuration file and it says a, a color here. So again, I, I wouldn't do it in a tutorial, so with advanced settings. All right, so are we okay with this? So we basically what we want, uh, want to do this step, we want to go through, from reads, uh, through variant calling to visualization. Um, now what we want to do, uh, we will talk about Galaxy workflow. So the, our plan is that we run several tools. We run FastQC, we run Snippy, and we, run, we complete the JBrowse job. Uh, we want to combine all those steps in a thing called Galaxy Workflow. So instead, next time, instead of running all those jobs separately, we can run in Galaxy Workflow. Right. And that would be our next topic. Galaxy workflow. So Galaxy was originally designed as a workflow engine. So Galaxy workflow is a series of a tool and data set actions that run in sequence. But in, in the plain language, it's basically you combine all steps you've done in a thing called Galaxy workflow. In its simplest form, the Galaxy workflow is made from three basic elements. There is an input data set 
example is the faster file, fast you files we used for fast QC and snippy. And the tools, toolboxes, like fast QC tool that we run today. And there's an element that you, you connect input data sets with tools and this element called Noodle. Uh, tools also have outputs, so we see output of a FastQC, so HTML file and text file. It is possible to direct output of one tool into input of another tool. Um, on the left you see a screenshot from a Galaxy a workflow editor in Galaxy. If you click on the input data set you can add comments. So you can specify that this particular input should be a forward reads or reverse reads or faster file. But in addition, you can add email notification on some Galaxy servers. You can do it in Galaxy Australia. So we know that JBrowse jobs run for some time and it's the last job in our pipeline. So we can add email notification. It's very good. You can do more complicated things with workflow. So if you do RNA sync and you have two conditions with multiple replicates. So you can combine those replicates in collection or list and run jobs on collection, not on every data set, but on collection. Galaxy will run jobs on every data set for you, but it will give you a more neat and compact view. As you see, Noodles here are replaced with something that look like a fettuccine. And this is fast evolving part of Galaxy, so it's changing rapidly. What are the advanced features? Uh, you can take a name, say from a FastQ file, and you can rename the output files, place it on the name of the input files. You can do it through Galaxy workflow, so you can find the input data set in uh, tool settings and workflow. That was highlighted by orange error, uh, uh, orange line, so like input one. And then in, you can configure output and you put something like hash sign, input, take a base name and add BAM file. And this line will rename a data set for you. Again, we're giving just overview here. So you, the main purpose here is that you need to be aware, you, it's, it's good to be aware about these features in Galaxy. If you know that they exist, you can find how to do it. What you can do, you can create workflow, you can edit it and you can run it. You can share it with, with your collaborators and through Galaxy and you can make it available to everyone on the Galaxy server. It's called publishing. You can download it on your computer and you can upload on another Galaxy server. There is a catch. Uh, in Galaxy Workflow we record the tool version. So if you upload to uh, another server and uh, it ha has different version of tools, you need to fix it. Um, the advantage is that you can develop and test your analysis with small data sets. You can create a workflow and use it on full size files. That's why the training data sets have a second life. You can use the training data sets to test your real life pipelines or build your real life pipelines. There's two ways to create Galaxy workflow. One from history. You click on the history menu, the cog wheel, and select an option extract for flow. It's very simple and very easy to do. The other way is go through, you can go from a workflow menu and there's an option to create a workflow from scratch. This is, this is much more fun. People usually like it, but it's a bit more complicated. So let's talk about extract workflow from history. So once you clicked on the extract workflow, in the middle window, you'll get all your histories with all steps uh, that can be either included or excluded from workflow. 
So what you basically do, you tick, you got an input data sets on the right. You can untick them if you don't want to use this data sets in the workflow. The same with the tool action. By default, every step is included. You can untick those steps and not use them in the workflow. Uh, the, the useful habit, clean your history before extracting the workflow. Just delete all failed jobs, all unneeded data sets. Um, once you select what you said, once you uh, we need to start it again. Window frozen. Well, because the problem occurred. All right, so it seems that we have an, a problem with internet connection. So I have the same presentation on my computer. So what I will do now, while it's this problem is just like we fix this problem, I just open the same presentation in. In PowerPoint. So let me know if you see the presentation. If there is any issue, let me know. We'll just continue. So, um, how you create in Workflow from scratch. So you go to workflow menu, you click on the plus, which is indicated by orange line, give a name and you can click save button. Once you click a save button, you see a workflow canvas or workflow editor. It has a similar interface in the sense that the cog wheel and the top right corner represents workflow menu. It's got also a list of tools and input data sets on the left. The same logic, you can, you click on a section like input and you click on an input data set and it will bring the box into canvas. You can search for tools or you can click on a section and uh, expand the section and click on a tool. Um, Tools and tools have input points and input data sets have just output points. How you connect this? You put a cursor over top of an output, press the left mouse button and drag it to the input of a tool you want to connect to. Then you'll see a noodle. How you remove the noodle? You put a cursor or mouse at the input point of the tool, it's indicated by error, and you'll see a, a small cross appeared next to it. Move cursor over the cross and click. That will disconnect the tool. If you want to add extra input, you can click on the multiple, multiple, multiple data sets option and it will duplicate the input for you. The same for the tools. What's useful, it's always useful to have annotation. It's a really bad thing to have data sets, un annotated data sets with unknown content. So you can give labels. It's good to avoid spaces from labels. Most tools are can that. Unfortunately, some tools may have problems. 
Annotations are very useful because you can put any text and you can provide more information. Uh, keep in mind that you may create this workflow today and use it next year. So you really want to annotate it. In the tools, you select a tool, you just click on the box, and it, on the left side, it will bring you different options. Remember that workflow records the version of a software over the tool. What that means, that if you created a workflow a year ago, and you use it again on Galaxy Australia, and it still has the same version of a tool, it, your workflow will run exactly with the same version of a tool. So it's very good if you want to have comparable results. The other things, you can add email notification, it's a simple switch, and you can configure Configure outputs, you can change settings, change some parameters, in a similar way as we've done in Galaxy. And how you save it is uh, and run. So in workflow menu, this cogwheel icon, uh, this option save. Um, and there's also, you can run workflow from the same menu. Alternatively, you can go to workflow menu, We'll give you a list of all workflow you have, use pull down menu, and use run option. Uh, other useful hint that if you want to edit your workflow, make a copy first. Keep the original workflow, it's a tiny data set, you don't really, and you probably really want to have uh, results of your previous How you run the workflow? Once you hit the run, the workflow will appear in the middle of the window. You have an option, you can put workflow into a new history, or you can keep it in the existing history. Um, labels and annotations are very useful because that's where you see inputs, where you select the correct inputs. Other neat feature in the workflow menu, you can tick show in a tool panel box, that's as explained on the, on the right, and your workflow will appear at the bottom of your tool menu. So you will not even need to, you, you don't need to go even work, into workflow menu. You can run your workflow from a Galaxy, from a front page of a Galaxy. So you will, get, you will see a personal front end for the Galaxy. Now, what we will do as a practical exercise, we will extract workflow from a history. That's the one that we created today. Now, to extract workflow in a history, you have to have all your jobs completed. Right. So, also keep in mind that your workflow has additional fast QC uh, steps that were um, uh, they are present in the tutorial as an optional step, as optional steps, but we have fast QC jobs. Those steps will be included in the workflow. So once, um, once the, once we extract workflow, we will edit it and add annotation to input files. Make this annotation meaningful. Say, if it's a forward reads, or first reads, right, first reads, if it's reverse, reverse reads, gene bank, we'll explain this is gene bank and a faster file. Uh, if you want, you can add uh, email notification to JBrowse step. This option is up to you. I think it's fun to get an email from a Galaxy. We'll save the workflow, we'll run it, and we will direct the results into a new history. Now, if you have not completed JBrowse job, this is very difficult part, we have a history published for you. So what you can do in Galaxy Australia, you can go and share data, top Galaxy menu, publish histories, and you can import a history variant calling with Snippy. If all your steps are completed, if you have a JBrowse job completed, you don't need to do this. Now, if you 
have problem with histamine, but that's extremely unlikely. Uh, the server is not busy now. We actually have a workflow for you. So you can import the workflow and edit it. So what we will do now, we will extract workflow from a history. For this, we need to switch to workflow variant calling bacteria tutorial. Uh, you can follow my steps on Galaxy. I will do it with you in parallel. And so we will edit workflow after extract it, and then we will. We will run it. Oh, it seems that we will lost connection to to presentation. That's very interesting. Now we have Galaxy Australia. What I do, I bring back the panel, the side panels. Made it full screen first. We bring side panel first. Let's see if we can. Oh. It seems that I lost connection to Scheduler and many other things. That's all right because I have the tutorial printed. So I'm um, do you still can see my shared screen? So I have a galaxy now. All right. So that's a problem with, uh, with the shared folders. Yes. All right, so we have a history. So um, just again for people, if you don't have a JBrowse job completed, you can go and share data, published histories, and select history workflow variant calling with Snippy. But let's assume that most jobs are completed now. Let's extract the workflow. So go in Galaxy menu, I'll manage bigger. You go in Galaxy menu and we select option, extract workflow. I hide the side panel. So again, history menu, extract workflow. What we see here, the input data sets on the right. So we will, need, we will use everything. We will use forward reads, we will use FASTA file for JBrowse, GeneBank file for Snippy, and annotation for gene annotation file for JBrowse. So we include QC, fast QC steps, Snippy, and JBrowse. Let's give it a nice name. Bacterial variant calling Any name. Well, it's better to give a meaningful name. And click Create Workflow. Now you need to click Edit. So because we don't have a tutorial, I'll keep it for some time. So click Edit. You will see it in a canvas. So I hide the tools panel just to make it bigger. So you can move the things, different options. So 
say this is mutant R read, so we'll name it, say, forward reads. This is mutant R2. There will be reverse reads. Well, tap faster, we call it faster. Faster. Ref. Gene Bank. Gene Bank. And this will be Gene Annotation GFF. So Called the gene in GFF. Yeah. So uh, what we want to do here, to, to to do here is to add meaningful comments. So for reads, reverse reads, reverse. There's a typo. It, again, um, it's. You may use like say common sense. Uh, those labels are just for you to remember that you use correct inputs. It's look a bit messy. So what I'll do, I zoom out a little bit and just move things in different things. Those are my, our reads. So we run a fast QC job. It's looking right now. And then we use Snippim and JBrowse. This faster reference for JBrowse. And this is Gene Bank reference that we used for assembly. So you can you can arrange this meaningfully. So not that this is done in a way. So um, if you want to add um, email notification, click on the JBrowse job. You'll see a menu, scroll down, that's a load. Somewhere in the bottom, you see email notification. So we'll save the file. And now I want to run the, work, uh, the workflow. In history menu, 
select run. What we want to do, we want to submit results to a new history. Click this button. It's automatically generate name for you. So it asks you in certain data uh, to provide the input file. The forward reads, that will be first reads. The reverse reads will be R2 reads. Uh, I'll make it a little bit bigger. What you see? Hide this. Gene bank reference. We use wild type gene bank reference. Faster file reference. That's wild type faster. And we need a gene annotation. And for this, we use wild type GFF. So once you select all these things, hit run workflow. And that would be it for today. So in probably in 15 minutes, you probably will receive an email uh, from Galaxy Australia that will tell you that your JBrowse job is completed. Um, in order to see your jobs, you need to switch to a new history. So you can do it through, a, through the either view all history or through the history menu. There's option show saved histories. Right. So I'll keep this window open for some time. I'll keep this option for some time, uh, just to people to compose, and we will go through the summary slide after that. Or we'll just hit run the workflow. So the workflow is submitted. So what I do, I click on view all history option. And this is new history. And it's empty. So what I do, I switch to this history and click done. So the data sets are being copied in this history. So while this is running, what we can do, we can show you the remaining slides. So what we've done today, we talked about Galaxy Australia and we used variant in uh, variant calling tutorial as a means to do this. So we talked about Galaxy Australia, we went through registration process, we've done an exercise, quality control, variant calling allocation, we created and submitted Galaxy workflow. And that's what we've done. Uh, you can do extra things. I haven't ticked this box in the workflow panel, but you can do it. And again, I want to thank, to thank all people involved in this training. And now uh, uh, I'll stop sharing this window. And am I right? And we will go to Jeff. Yes. Thanks, Igor. Um, I'll just start my video. Um, so um, I guess uh, whilst I'm just going to share the screen, um, the discussion board, um, all the attendees, um, you can still put things into the discussion board and we'll be monitoring it for, a, you know, uh, for another half hour or something like that. So um, if, you, if you do have questions that haven't been answered um, or, do, or new questions, please put them in the discussion board. We'll also be answering. I think they're nearly all answered, but there's a couple there that aren't. So um, just keep your eyes peeled. And 
the discussion board, we will keep um, going. Uh, or it, it'll be, it'll be um, saved in perpetuity, so you can go back and have a look at that at any time you like. Okay, I'm just, we'll share my screen. Um, so, I'd just uh, like to, first of all, thank you, thank Eagle for leading this uh, session today. Um, I'd also like to thank Mike for helping Eagle and um, um, making sure that everything was uh, running smoothly. Um, thanks also to the facilitators at each node and thank you to all the attendees, um, to you guys for attending today's training. Um, just a reminder that this is the second of a series of four short introductions to Galaxy um, and the many tools it contains to undertake um, various bioinformatics functions. So the next session in the series will be held on the 23rd of October um, and it's going to look at using Galaxy Australia for RNA-seq analysis. So again, uh, the, if you go to the page uh, www.embolabr.org.au slash about slash events, the registration links are up and you can uh, register um, already. Um, and also, as I said, we're recording this session um, and it'll be available at the Emble ABR YouTube channel uh, within a week. Um, we'll also, as I said, be sending out links to the recordings, um, link to the discussion board, and any other, and, and, and the um, material at the end of the, uh, within the next week as well. Um, so two more uh, quick things before you leave today. Um, firstly, we'd like to encourage you to fill out the uh, and short evaluation survey. It only takes one to two minutes to complete and there's a link to that at the bottom of the discussion board. So if you can follow that, that would be great. Um, we're always interested in uh, your feedback, Amber ABR, we're really interested in your feedback on the topic but and also on the method of delivery, this um, distributed method of delivery. And um, also uh, uh, you can comment on the um, content as well and that will go to the Galaxy Australia team. And finally, uh, I would just like to acknowledge um, our funders who have made this uh, training possible. So. Uh, Embel ABR would like to acknowledge funding and support from Bioplatforms Australia and the University of Melbourne. And the Galaxy Australia project, of which Igor is part, um, would like to acknowledge funding from ARDC, which was formerly uh, ANS Nectar RDS, through the Data Enhanced Virtual Laboratory Program. Okay, thanks again. Um, as I said, if you want to continue putting stuff into the discussion document, that's great. Um, and we'll answer those questions. Um, otherwise, thanks a lot for attending and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you. Bye-bye.